Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles. We're going to talk about Space Daddy Elon Musk getting the hose turned on him, getting hosed by Twitter. Yeah, they've apparently given him the fire hose or access to the fire hose, which means Musk can look at all the data at Twitter and determine whether or not you know, the accounts are fake or not fake and close the deal potentially. So we're going to talk about this because the uh, bots could actually tank the deal. Uh, if Twitter turns out to be significantly more fake than 5%, which is what Twitter told Elon Musk, uh, it was about 5% fake accounts. And I suspect Twitter is significantly more fake than, than 5%, then he probably has an out. He probably can cancel the deal. And uh, I don't know what happens to Twitter after that because we are entering recession. The tech bubble is bursting and Twitter's credibility is shot. So good luck with that, I guess. This is uh, the, the last best chance you have. Space Daddy is the last shuttle that you guys can take uh, to save your asses. And even then, once he buys the company, I guarantee you he's going to gut a lot of the people working there and he's going to turn it into a leaner, meaner operation. Anyway, let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Guys, over 269,000 subs. Thank you for the support. We do talk about Twitter because it does pertain to pop culture. Again, Twitter has entirely too much influence over pop culture, whether it's uh, journalists or studios or, you know, stan accounts or whatever. Twitter has way too much sway over pop culture. Twitter has been ground zero for cancel culture. And um, man, the Twitter, the Twitter sphere, Twitter sphere was rocked when Elon Musk, uh, you know, made an attempt to buy the company. Now we're sort of in limbo. We don't know if he's going to, to close the deal or not. Twitter wants him to, of course they do, because they're never going to get a better deal. And I'm looking at my, my tech stocks right now and they're all cratering. So yeah, his $54 a share or whatever he was offering is looking pretty damn good. Uh, Elon Musk said he's not going to buy it. If it's mostly fake, it's a pig in a poke. And uh, reluctantly, Twitter is turning over the fire hose of uh, data to Musk to take a look at and make sure that it's not fake. So this is coming from Quartz. Elon Musk wanted more data, so Twitter gave him all of it. So yeah, Elon Musk's latest objection to the $44 billion deal he signed by Twitter is that the company hasn't provided enough information. Musk's lawyers allege it has made it impossible for him to get a loan, one of the few conditions that would allow the Tesla and SpaceX CEO to get out of the deal. He's looking to backpedal on the deal because he thinks it's fake. I think he also thinks it's a, a bad deal. Except the argument won't work. On June 8th, Twitter gave Musk access to its entire fire hose a stream of tweets and metadata about them that encompasses the 500 million tweets per day, according to the Washington Post. Uh, Musk had originally claimed back in May that Twitter misrepresented the number of bots it counted as users in its public filings. Given that he already signed the deal, which didn't mention anything about bots at all, this line of argument was unlikely to give Musk a legal way out. That's not really the issue anymore because Musk's lawyer's latest argument was that Twitter wouldn't give him sufficient information about its user base in order to get his loans and complete the deal. This is going to be much harder to prove now that Twitter has given him access to the fire hose, the hose. Twitter's turning the hose on Elon Musk. Twitter's user base has always been unclear. This is a problem, and it has been. Um, it has been for years. Um, nobody knows how much of Twitter is actually real. All public social media companies report their user numbers to shareholders, but most peer companies like Meta, that'd be Facebook, Snap, and Pinterest use monthly active users or daily active users. In 2019, Twitter came up with its own statistic. That's not a, a, a red flag at all. Its own statistic called monetizable daily active users. It's a measure of how many Twitter users they can serve ads to on any given day, although it's not entirely clear what that accounts for. Twitter recently admitted to overcounting its user numbers. Yeah, we did a video on this. Twitter could be significantly more fake, and they could also be hosing their advertisers. Twitter could be turning the fire hose on their advertisers. They could be serving ads to bots and taking the ad revenue. 
you know, and saying, look at all these people that viewed your ads. Look at all these upvotes and likes that you got and retweets and, and they're fake. In order for Musk to drink out of the fire hose Twitter just handed over, so to speak, he would need to have a team of data scientists decipher what is bot activity and what isn't, determine what users are monetizable and when they logged in, and then surmise how many bots were counted as monetizable users. It's an impossible task and a possibly brilliant move for Twitter. This likely spoils Musk's line of argument that Twitter isn't giving him the information he needs. There's just one thing Twitter gave him. It's information. They just gave him too much of it. So this could be because, look, this has been a very uh, combative, hostile takeover, right? It's been very combative. Twitter is not happy with Elon Musk. Uh, their lawyer is definitely not happy with Elon Musk. He's actually called out some of their employees. And I, I do think Twitter is a garbage company, right? But that being said, a deal's a deal. And, uh, you know, if, if Musk's people can't, you know, make heads or tails of the data, that's probably not Twitter's problem. So this could be just another, another, uh, wrench they're trying to throw into it or, you know, force him to buy the company, even though they know the company is not worth jack shit. You know, it really isn't, um, so this is uh yesterday insider. No, this is today, today. Insider, Elon Musk has threatened to nix the Twitter deal over too many bots on the platform. Here's why Musk is so fixated on fake accounts and why they're so tricky to measure. Bullet points, Elon Musk has threatened to walk away from his Twitter buyout. Twitter says less than 5% of accounts are bots, but Musk and others argue it could be much higher. Bots are famously hard to measure and could have real implications for Twitter ad revenue. Um, so here's the thing. He's basically could be stuck with it. And he could be overpaying for it. And, you know, if if he doesn't buy it for whatever reason, if he doesn't buy it, then Twitter has to prove to its advertisers now that, that they're not uh, they're not paying for fake traffic. You know, here's the counter argument. Musk's fixation on bots has led observers to wonder if the issue is just an excuse to wriggle out of the deal following a Tesla stock slump. But bots do have real implications for ad revenue and bot accounts are famously tricky to measure. Here's what we know about Twitter's bot issues. Why are there bots on Twitter? <laughs> Why are there bots on Twitter? The most famous, famous example of the power of Twitter bots was in 2016 when a Russia-linked troll farm unleashed over 50,000 bots. And then Star Wars happened and the Russians, the Russians hate Disney Star Wars and they, they use more bots. So here's the thing, they're admitting they're admitting that that Twitter has potentially been compromised by bot forms in the past, but they're also telling Elon Musk that it's only 5% fake. Which is it? Which is it? How many bots are on Twitter? Measuring the exact number is a thorny issue, and everyone seems to have a different estimate. Uh, Twitter has maintained that fewer than 5% of the accounts are bots. That figure is the result of quarterly human reviews of thousands of accounts that are sampled at random consistently over time. CEO said, Musk is arguing that Twitter's figure is low, very low. In fact, he said during a recent episode of the All In podcast, he thinks the number is at least 20%. I, I'm going to say 30 to 40. Currently, what I'm being told is there's just no way to know the number of bots. It's like in, as unknowable as the human soul. Uh, some outside firms have taken a stab at figuring it out. Um, data analytics firm Global Data found that 10% of Twitter's active accounts are posting spam which was based on a sample of 22,000 tweets. Again, these are samples. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's bad. Uh, I'm imagining the number is far higher in terms of the bots that are on Twitter. Yeah, I think it's at least 20. I think it could be. I think it could be 30 to 40 percent of Twitter is fake. How many real people do you know use Twitter regularly that aren't um, people that live and breathe online, that aren't, you know, Tumblr people, that aren't, uh, media personalities or journalists or, you know, Wokies or quote unquote or whatever, you know, how many real people, how many grandmas are on Twitter? Is your Mima on Twitter? No, she's not. Nana's not on Twitter. She's on Facebook, but she sure as hell is not on Twitter. So, I mean, I really do think that the numbers are way overinflated and this is always a game. This is always a shell game to keep the stocks up because Twitter is not good at making money. Uh, is a, a platform that has been hijacked by activists um, inside and outside users, you know, the employees and the users, and uh, they just want to keep it going, keep it free. 
And, um, you know, to do that, you got to trick advertisers and trick shareholders. And I think that uh, Elon Musk is going to at least shine a light on that, even if he doesn't wind up buying the company. Ultimately, uh, the, the trust in Twitter is going to be at an all time low, uh, I think, for for everybody involved. I, I think there's no going back at this point. So maybe that was the point. I have no idea. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Now he's just tasty, delicious, rotten flesh meat, which I can consume. Don't read into it too much. Just like our museum, the cafe, it's open to Brewster is eager to serve. I don't think this was in the show. So run, 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 run. Oh, oh you got splatted. No. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh she was begging and you kicked her in the face. I don't care. Hey guys, Squid King here. And today we're in a- <laughs> Not girl boss, not girl boss at all. She is not a material girl. She is not. Oh, it's Christmas time here in your mom. Nobody wants to join your mom. What? Like I can't even cook kid cuisine right. I would last about two minutes with Gordon Ramsay. What? Where is he? He's hiding. He's hiding from you. He better. Oh my God, you got the ax. Walker, does this look like Steven Universe? Let me punch him. Well, I'm just here for the wax. Get in the dirt. Well, that was a combination of events I probably shouldn't have put together. Anyways, let's open this bottle too. Chica Pinata. Is that official? Oh, no. There's a bootleg. Hello. Ooh, I'm sorry. Hey guys, it's Diamond Tool. Let's make a farm. Like and subscribe and buy my merch. I mean, while you're here, you guys should like really like and subscribe and buy our merch, all of which we have. <laughs> that is true. Can't run him carrying trash. And you can get away with one F bomb per PG 13 movie. Oh, I wish I'd yeah. known that sooner. Yeah. All right, so we're going to wrap this effort up. Yes. <laughs>